Yo, what is poppin' guys? We are here with my week 3 match for the MPL. We are facing the Amazon Wall Range Forest and the coach Ursa Persa. Uh, we are started on 2, my opponent started 1-1. One one. Um, got a big 6-0 loss last week because he brought a trick room team that just didn't match up that well versus um, an opposing necrosman that just got like 6 kills or anything. And like he has definitely a trick room team, but looking at the squad today I don't think he brings one. Um, which is good for me because that allows me to like have a better matchup versus the along and narrow wag. Um, he also brings the mana feed, Dragon Knight, probably DD, but it could be like Bant or something. Um, I really expect Marowak to be offensive. Uh, mana fee, Tail Gloss set 100%, probably max HP, max speed, but maybe like just max speed, um, max special attack. Polyrath, probably defensive to check my Weaver. Um, I think Diancy will be his rocker with like dual stab and maybe like. Heal bell or something, I don't know. And brings Mega Scepter, which probably has like just like four attacks or something. Um, if you didn't see my team, go watch my team builder I uploaded it yesterday. Um, it's definitely a fun watch, definitely packing some heat. Um, Life of Weaver, Sap Super, Physical Defense, Azunesti, Fort Celebi, Drum, um, Zardex, three standard Rapid Spin, Fortress, and AV Amungus. Um, I decided here to lead off with my um, Fortress because he doesn't have Hazard Removal and it would be cool for me to get up, get up rocks early. Um, if he like leads off with Diancy to get his rocks up, um, I can just get like my rocks up and spin his stuff away or like hit the uh, Marowak on the switch and on the next turn. But yeah, I decided to lead off with my Fortress and we'll see how it goes. Um, Looking at his team, Zardex needs um, Sceptile to be gone. And has to like set up on the Polyrath to sweep with the Belly Drum. Um, maybe even on the Mana Fee if I predict correctly, but I probably just need him to um, like sack his Scepter to something and yeah, like just sweep with Zardex. But also, Celebi has a very solid shot out of sweeping once I get rid of the Dragon Knight. Um, really puts in a lot of work with him. He gets off with his Scepter, so um, I could stay in and go for my Rock. But um, I don't really want to catch an HP find. I think Amoongus is a fine, fine switch. And um, before the game started, he said, "Please don't be Sapsir by Azu," uh, which I actually am. So I don't want to go into into Azu just yet. So I, because I don't want to reveal that I'm Sapsir and just go into my Amoongus here, scout for the HP fire, which he um, shows he has. I don't think it's HP ice. Um, that wouldn't make sense with my team. And now, um, as I said in my team builder, um, if the matchup is so that um, Marowak is the best switch into my Amoongus, I will just go for the foul play and um, try to get as much damage off on, on, on him as possible. Um, so I just go for the foul play as he goes into Nightfire, his, um, his Marowak, and I get 50% damage off, which reveals to me that he's max, max attack, probably adamant. Um, so... Marowak obviously is a big threat. I expect it to be um, to be thickler, but it could also be like a rocker with um, maybe another item, maybe Cold Barbarian or something to take on the Weaver better. But I definitely have to switch out here. I don't want to lose my Amoongus. And um, my best switch into this thing is actually Azumar Witch. Because rocks are under up, can't take two Shadow Bones after I get left this deck. So that's cool. I go to Azumar and now he reveals to be um, to be thickler as well because it does like over 50% damage. I've um, got a very low roll there if he was actually max HP, but um, doesn't really matter. Here I just go for the protect um, just in case he wants to stay in and go for the for the shadow bone, which he does. And yeah, like I um, get enough health back so that I'm not too, uh, not awkward by the shadow bone from this range. Um, here I just will fire off a scout, um, trying to revenge it, and he just takes the Marowak. He probably speed crept me by one point, I guess, but um, I have like 12 speed EV, so I outspeed a uh, speed creep, speed creeping Marowak. Um, he just decks it here, which is kind of surprising because um, he had switch ends, like he could have gone into maybe Dragon Knight, although like he probably doesn't want it to be burned. But um, like I probably would have saved the Marowak here, I don't know why he like just decked it. But now I get some more lefties back, which is nice, and he can go just into Dragon Knight. Um, the way he brings it in, he probably like. Either wants to bluff the Thunder Punch, um, which never kills even if it's banned, that's like 50% max, or he wants to set up and like try to kill me with a plus 2 Earthquake or something. 
Um, I will just go for the Encore here because I don't want him to like set up a sub or anything. Sub could very well be a, be a problem because now he like knows that I'm sap super and he's physically defensive and Skull never breaks a sub from um, from Dragon Knight. Um, even if I'm like um, Ice Beam, I will just break the multi scale and he's still at, an, at, an, at a very high amount of health. So I will just stay in and go for the Encore here. As he fires off a Thunder Punch, does 60% of that, 6 damage. Um, I probably would have lived a max throw, but like the max throw I think was 68%, 68.3%. I wasn't like 68, so maybe I would have died to max throw depending on the set. But um, he's definitely adamant shows Bamath. Um, I'm pretty sure about that. So if he was if he was jolly, um, he got a very high roll, and I would have like lived every lived every Thunder Punch. But now he's, lo he's locked into the um, Thunder Punch, which is, great, which is great for me. I can save my Azu here and go into my Fortress, uh, which I do. Um, he makes a nice double into the um, Manaphy because like now Manaphy actually has a very solid shot of like breaking breaking through my team because Azumaru cannot can no longer wall it. So um, in hindsight, the Thunder Punch probably was pretty clever, um, even though like he should not have risked um, his Dina to have his multi scale broken in my opinion, but. Um, regardless, it worked out for him, so um, he sends on his mana fee, makes a good double here. As I go into my Marcellus, um, I know I can take any hit. He goes for the Surf, um, revealed to be Surf instead of um, Skulk, which tells me that he's probably um, max special attack by like the damage he did and shit like that, because I'm specially defensive as fuck. Uh, he probably wants it to be like special attack mid -sur with Surf, so um, he can do as much damage as possible to a potential DD Zadek. Um, but I will just fire off the toxic to put it his, to put this thing on a timer. I still have like solid checks or counters to it, and I can just save my fort uh, fortress here because I still want to be able to set up rocks or spin and go into my Amungus. Um, as he tail blows up, um, that's fine with me. He still is like on um, on a timer with the toxic. He doesn't have the left left and he tail blows up, tail blows up on my switch, which, which is perfectly fine. I am AV and I can take any one ice beam. As you can see, that's 68 percent. Um, which is great for me. I can just go for the Giga Drain, get some health back, and like now it will die to Toxic the next turn. So here I can just go into my Azu, sack it to um, the Ice Beam or the Surf, whatever he wants to go for, and like have a double down with the Azu anti anti mana fee. Um, here I think I go into my Fortress to be a yeah to be able to um, set up rocks, but he goes into Dragon Knight, and now I know that this thing is Charles Bent. It will definitely have the Outrage or Dragon Claw. Um, it will definitely have thunder, thunder Punch and Fire Punch, and it will have like a last coverage move. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe what's it called? Um, Earthquake or maybe E Speed, but I'm not sure about that. So, um, I kind of played a lot what to go for on this turn. Um, so did he, it was a very long turn, like at least two minutes or something. And I ultimately decided to switch out into ZX because it covers the, um, it covers the Fire Punch play. Um, because Fire Punch does like 35% max to the Zardex that I have and I can just fire off the big um, big Dragon Claw, go for the Belly Drum to get at least one kill, um, put 7 range for Celebi or get rid of the counter to Weaver or stuff like that. And if he goes for the Outrage, I um, like I can like sack the Zardex and Weaver kills with the Life of, Life of Ice Crash through most of the Um There's no reason to go for Thunder Punch for him and he won't go for the Earthquake, so um, basically, his play was either was either fire punching or um, outraging, and I think he like had to make a prediction at one point. But I like going into Zard and sacking it to a potential outrage was no drawback play, and he goes for the outrage. So that means my Weaver can now come in and go for the life of Ice Crash, which will kill the um, Green Bean here, the Dragon Knight, one hundred percent of the time. So that's great for me. Like now, um, Celebi looks really really good <laughs> because like the Dragon Knight is gone and. Like he cannot two kill me with anything on his team, which is absolutely amazing. Um, besides maybe like high rolls from a Sceptile um, Dragon Claws. Could very well pack the axes, but I don't really expect it. Um, he goes into his, um, what's called, his, into his Polyrath, and I have no reason not to go into my Fortress here. Or, or into my Munga, sorry. As he makes a double out into Stayant, he probably like, I don't know what he expected, but like he does, didn't have like a solid way to deal with the Mungas anyway, so it didn't really matter what to double out into. Um, I go for Giga Drain as he hits me with Diamond Storms, that's fine, like, I just want to get some damage off here as he puts me, like, slowly but surely in range for some attacks, um, but I'm not too afraid of this. Now I switch out because I want to, like, have to win 100% with my Amungas plus Weaver, so I get the Regenerator back. Um, I still can take 
two diamond stones from range I'm at with the um, with my bomber Salus here, and I will try to set up my spell slot here because um, Scepter, Mega Scepter dies to a plus two uh, plus two psychic from Celebi 100% after rock, and otherwise it's a roll unless it's like a nay of nature, obviously, in which case you just you just drop. So he goes for another dice, diamond stone crits me, <laughs> Fortress goes down, I don't get out rock, but now I have a free um, nasty plot with my Celebi. Um, should he stay in diamond stone? That's like 39% <laughs> to me if he like if he's like. Uninvested with it, which he is, or like only like 4 to 12 EV. So it does not do more than 40%. And Scepter cannot um, kill me after the um, after the Diamond Storm damage which uh, with the Dragon Pearl. So I have a free, free nasty plot here. As he makes um, basically, he basically um, gives, hands me the game. And like, I mean, I had to game one anyway, but now he hands me the game because I'm still at full health. And even if he's Axis on his. Um, Scepter, I take it 100% of the time because I know what Teddy is. Um, after I saw the um, after I saw the damage on the HP with the HP fire on my Amoongus earlier, so I can now go for the Psychic. Um, hopefully, I kill if he's like haste. If he's naive, I kill. Um, if he's hasty, I don't kill. But he seems to be naive, or I just got a high roll and I kill him with the Psychic. And now I hit him with the GG. It's Aki in the chat. Um, get the easy sweep here in the late game with my Celebi. And we'll win the game 3 0 because um, there's no way Polyrath can take a plus 2 to the rank from next special attack. Um, Celebi. So, um, you finally get a win this season. Um, it was a solid game. Uh, GG to my opponent. I think he like let his drag, um, let his Marowak go down too early. And um, I don't think it was a smart play to, um, to like lock himself into Outrage with the. Um, with the Dragon Knight with Weavile around, but um, had he locked himself into the Fire Punch and I stay in with my Fortress, I could have just um, Dragon Danced up with Zardex. If I was a Dragon Dance set, I didn't didn't reveal my set at this at this point and couldn't know. But like plus one um, Zardex would have swept from this point or plus two, and he probably like had to <laughs> had to either double out with the Dragon Knight or go for the Outrage so that my Zard or my Weaver cannot like uh, so that my Zard cannot like. Um, come in and set up in his face. So um, yeah, Celebi definitely MVP with the late game sweep, but Weaver and Among Us coming in clubs as well, Weaver with the very important kill on the Dragon Knight, which was a nuisance to my team because um, I like already got rid of like my bulky Azu, which was a fine check to every coverage move besides the Thunder Punch. <laughs> um, it was like a pretty annoying set to deal with, but Weaver obviously was able to come back on the other stretch and get the kill. Celebi with the nice late game sweep, sweep and Mungus with just being there and wall the shit out of stuff and get um, very important damage off on the Marowak switch. And I think that was a very important turn for me, um, turn two basically on the switch into um, into Marowak to hit him with the foul play and put it in range. So um, very very solid win for me. Um, it wasn't too long of a match, thankfully like a nice 22 turns. But I'm um, very hyped that I finally got a win and I kind of guess I'm back on track even though like I never was off track I guess because um, I basically never really doubt that I make the playoffs even though I'm still 1-2 and two, I'm pretty pretty sure I will um, I will make the playoffs anyway and I will get back on track with some nice wins so I hope I can get a nice W um, next week as well to be 2-2 two and two, and like hopefully some of my Different opponents will choke a game away here, here or there, but um, if I win out, I basically am guaranteed to make make the playoffs anyway and win my division. So you could always go ten and two, like just like last season, and just make playoffs and go from there. But that's it for week three. I um, hope you guys enjoyed. Definitely leave a like and a comment. Um, tell me what you think, and see you next week where we face the Montreal Monsters and the coach Lou Victini. My good buddy, that's gonna be fun. Um, see you next week.